Welcome back. Last year, the Republican-controlled legislature passed a law designed to weaken and undermine unions across the state. But their main target was the teachers' union in Miami-Dade, the United Teachers of Dade. The law, which, by the way, was exempted for all the unions that supported Governor Ron DeSantis, made it harder for unions to collect dues, while at the same time requiring the unions to increase the percentage of dues-paying members from 50% to 60%. Any union that failed to meet the 60% threshold would face elimination. The United Teachers of Dade fell just short of that 60% mark and is now facing a challenge to its existence. A competing group, the Miami-Dade Education Coalition, is going to challenge the United Teachers of Dade in an election in the coming weeks about who should represent teachers. Joining me this morning is Brent Urbanek, a Miami-Dade teacher and president of the Miami-Dade Education Coalition. Did I butcher your last name, Urbanic? Uh, you, you did, it's, it's Urbanic. It's you did Urbanic. very well, though, yes. All right, you did I, very I, well. I apologize no for problem. that. But mm -hmm. All right, so you, in order to qualify for this election against the United Teachers of Dade, mm -hmm. need to collect about, what is it, about 2,300 signatures it's or about so? About 10% of the bargaining unit. So it's about 2,300. About 2,300, yes. And how many uh, the cards have you collected We're so far? Over 2,400 and counting. Uh, all right. And cards come in all the time. And mm -hmm. so you are, when are you going to deliver those? Because the, the way this works, and it's a little technical, mm -hmm. once you get the cards, you have to submit them to the PERC, which is the governing board over unions yes. in the state of Florida, yes. uh, in Tallahassee, and they have to verify the signatures. When mm -hmm. are you expecting to do that? We're going to go ahead and hand them in on Monday. That's right. our plan date. Um, and the reason being is that we're not sure when PERC is going to call the election, and, and we don't want to be in the midst of, of collecting, and they call the election, and then, you know, they say, oh, well, you should have already submitted your card. So we're just going to go ahead and hand them in now. All right, we so tell me why you think Miami-Dade Education Coalition would better serve teachers than the United Teachers of Dade. Well, because UTD has, a, has quite a, an extensive history of just failing the bargaining unit in general. They have not uh, been able to bargain decent salaries for us. You know, our salary schedule is behind that of Monroe and Broward. Um, there has been all kinds of, uh, you know, interesting election shenanigans that have happened when people have tried to effectively challenge the, the, the ruling party in UTD. And, uh, and overall, we, we feel like in a lot of ways that the union is in the pocket of the district. And even in this whole process, uh, the district has, has, in a lot of ways, been kind of helpful to UTD and against us. Uh, we were originally able to send emails to, uh, you know, people in, in through the district email, and they blocked that. And then uh, we were obviously not able to, in any way, speak on behalf of our organization at any staff meetings or anything like that. And but so, that generally, though, that, mm -hmm. that's not specific to you. Any group can't just walk into a school and make a presentation. Well, it seems like all these groups that do have these, these business ties to MDCPS, we get emails from different groups all the time. Um, and, and then, obviously, whenever there is some type of uh, presentation that they would have to make in the staff meetings or anything like that. Um, they may not be able to do it in any long format, but nonetheless, they do have a platform far greater than anything we've been afforded. All right, I want to get to the elephant that's sort of in the room, which mm -hmm. is that uh, there was this bill in Tallahassee that was pushed for, uh, in fact, one of the individuals from the Freedom Foundation, which is a right-wing conservative group mm -hmm. um, that has made its mission to destroy government sector unions across the country. They've been very active in that all across the U.S. They helped write the bill that puts you in the position you are now. And the Freedom Foundation is bankrolling you, correct? Yes. Okay. It's How much money have they spent so far to help you try to take out United Teachers of Dade? The, that number I do not have. But it's important to understand the, the relationship as being purely strategic. So can I make a, a, like a military comparison? Sure. Imagine there's a rebel group that's dealing with an entrenched aristocracy, okay? And the rebel group really just has torches and pitchforks. And then another group comes along and says, hey, we will bankroll 
you to have weapons that will actually make you competitive. And why do you think they're doing that, though? Why do you think they're bankrolling you to take out the United Teachers of Date? Because Freedom Foundation isn't necessarily anti-union. They're, they're anti-partisanship in unions. They, you don't see them going after, like, the Las Vegas uh, Teachers Union. I can't remember. I think it's Clark County, Nevada. You don't see them attacking them. They disaffiliated from their state and national organizations. Um, and it's really the partisan positions that are taken by public sector unions that the Freedom Foundation stands against. And we at MDEC, we agree with that. We don't think that union dues should be funneled into any you know, particular party. And that's why MDEC is a nonpartisan union. We've written it into our constitution and bylaws. All right, you pointed out the issue of salaries. You, you don't think that teachers, well, look, I think we could all appreciate if teachers would receive more money, but you don't think the union has done enough in that regard? No, I do not. Uh, what is your salary? My salary is probably about in the 60s, depending on how much I work as far as tutoring after school and what kind of clubs I take. Um, but it's by no means close to what, what the United Way has said is a minimal acceptable salary for someone who uh, lives in this county. They put that number in the 70s. Most teachers don't make that. And it's interesting because the United Way, you know, uh, works with MDCPS and, and trying to get donations from us teachers um, well, to help the organization and their own standard for a salary most teachers don't make. You're, you say that the United Teachers of Dade hasn't done anything. What about the, the property tax referendum that was used to help give you additional money? That property tax referendum, it originated with some of our own people who support MDEC pushing for that and then UTD adopted it. And UTD financed that effort, right? As far as how much they finance, I can't speak to that. And what but about, I mean, and my understanding is, is that, is that the United Teachers of Dade, the American Federation of Teachers, another group that you say you would withdraw from, mm -hmm. the National Education Association, another group that you say you would withdraw from, all contributed both in 2018 and I think that, you know, AFT contributed in 2022 to get that approved and renewed. And as a result, there's going to be about 400 million extra dollars that wouldn't be going to teachers that is now going to teachers. So when you say UTD hasn't done enough for teachers, how do you reconcile that? I mean, not to put you on the spot, but I pulled some of the pay records for you knowing you were coming in. In the last five years, you've received more than $50,000 as a result of the money that UTD was able to get through this referendum passed so that you could benefit. Last year, you received an additional $14,041. So $14,041 still is far behind what the step raises that we were originally meant to get which should have gotten us. And the negotiating away of our, our step raises was something that for a lot of people was a deal breaker. Who, who uh, established that the step increases at school districts were gonna go away? It was the legislature. But the legislator put in a grandfather clause. But they said that it has to, salaries have to be based on merit. This was the Republican mm -hmm. move to put merit into salary structure, mm -hmm. right? So as a result, that they couldn't do a step structure. But instead, through, the, through this, again, this referendum we talked about that's bringing $400 million into teachers' pockets over the next four years, that is a step. They basically put a step system in there. You get a little extra because of your seniority than somebody who works, who has fewer years. Am I correct? It's a misrepresentation of the way that the bill is written. That merit pay could have been, you can just give an extra dollar. There was no reason for them to get rid of the steps. And in fact, when UTD did negotiate away is there the a steps, single school district it remains that way. Is there a single school district in the state that didn't do away with the steps because of the legislature? They followed the lead of UTD because initially... So every UTD, other school district, every school district in the state got it wrong, according to you? Well, every school district in the state ends up having the advantage of the fact that the FEA and the NEA and their local unions work together and try, trying to entrench their own power positions to ensure that the money base stays with them. And this is something that we're, we at MDEC are trying to fight. We want to be a local only union. We want to only have our dues stay with us and be nonpartisan because in the nonpartisan union, 
you're not going to have a struggle to get to 60 percent. Why do you think why do you think the the you know the bill that was written that put you in the position you are now mm -hmm. exempted all of the unions that supported the governor you don't don't you see that this was a politically designed bill they, in, in other words Tallahassee didn't have a problem with with unions playing politics as long as the politics were in favor of the governor and Republicans which is why they exempted police unions firefighter unions corrections unions all the unions that had endorsed DeSantis got exempted from this bill so Republican unions are good. It's the unions that favor Democrats that are bad? In some of those unions, some of them do take nonpartisan positions. I can't speak to how many, but they do. Okay, And I'm not here as a representative of the Republican Party. I'm here to represent teachers, and I'm here to try to advocate for us to get a better union that can negotiate for things like better be benefits, wages, and working conditions, and stay out of the par partisan politics that a lot of the unions get into, especially the parent unions. You don't think you're being used by uh, Freedom Foundation? No, I think I'm using them. You're using them. But mm -hmm. you don't know how much they've spent, you said. No. I mean, no. they're paying for all the mailings. Mm -hmm. You have canvassers going door to door. They're paying for all of that. Mm -hmm. They pay for all your legal expenses. Yeah. And so how else were we supposed to do it when we don't get access to even talk to our own our own bargaining unit members in school? How well, we if there was so that? much if there was so much discomfort with UTD, you would think there would be a groundswell from all of the schools. And yet you've collected about twenty four hundred signatures and counting UTD has turned in more than eleven thousand well of course you have to think of the conditions they were able to collect those in they could speak at a staff meeting they can instill misinformation and fear in people do you have evidence and of misinformation that they've given of course they they call us a, a, a you know a front group or an astroturf organization but but we, you but the definition of astroturf is a group in that is funded by outside groups you, you are the definition of an astral turf organization, aren't you? No, we're not, because it's still grassroots when plain teachers like myself, with no political experience or aspirations, put together an organization to try to advocate for better benefits, wages, and working conditions. And if we are offered some better weapons to make a military comparison, to give us a shot, we're gonna do this. This is not our first time trying this. We tried this 20 years ago under the Teachers' Rights Advocacy Coalition, and it didn't work because we are outgunned by the enormous power and money that UTD has access to by FEA, NEA, and the district that supports them. Brent, I'm sure we're going to have more of this conversation as the as the election eventually comes about. We don't have a date yet for it, but it'll probably be in the next couple of months, I would mm -hmm. guess. Yes, I'm sure we'll be talking more. I really appreciate All right. it. We'll be right back after the break.